What's up, Prize Fight fans? I'm Brian Tong, and this is the first ever Prize Fight tablet war that you've been asking for. It's a Prize Fight punch out between the Samsung Galaxy Tab and Apple's iPad 3G. Our judges for this fight are senior editor Donald Saved by the Bell, senior associate editor Jessica Dish Em Out Dole Court, and Brian Ring a Ling a Ding Tong. Now we'll take all three judges' blind scores and average them out to the nearest tenth each round. The final Prize Fight score will be an average of all rounds using the same decimal system. Let's get ready to rumble. Round one is designed. Samsung's Galaxy Tab has a solid design with its 7-inch screen and curved corners that's less than half the size of the iPad. It's lighter and more comfortable to hold. The Tab's 1024 by 600 resolution on a smaller screen brings a slightly crisper image, but it left us wanting more, and by more, we mean screen size. The iPad brings Apple's highest level of design, and its 9.7-inch screen is big, but its design isn't bulky. The metal finish and curved edges are gorgeous, and its 1024 by 768 display just pops. It might be heavier than you like, but it feels like it's worth every penny. Apple's iPad gets a perfect 5, and Samsung's Galaxy Tab gets a 4. Next round is controls and user interface. The Galaxy Tab is pure Android, and if you've used it before, you'll feel right at home. One issue is that it's the exact same experience you would get on a phone. There's nothing that makes it unique for a tablet. You'll still get the same customization, but widgets don't align with icons. Hitting the menu button to access app features on the Android OS bug Donald. The swipe input method is here, but at the end of the day, newcomers to tablets might feel intimidated by its learning curve. Now, it doesn't matter if you've used an iPhone or iPod, the iPad's user interface is so simple that several judges mentioned how our nieces and nephews, one and a half years and older, can all use the iPad. We keep saying it, but it's still amazing how easy it is to use. The keyboard is more spacious and comfortable for typing, and the iPad was snappier navigating overall. The iPad strikes hard with its second perfect round, and the Galaxy Tab gets a 3.3. So after averaging two rounds, Apple leads by more than a point, but there's plenty of fight to go. Round three is features and performance. The Tab has everything that iPad users have been craving for with front and rear facing cameras with a flash, a micro SD card slot, wireless hotspot capability, and flash 10.1 support. It also comes packed with Google's goodies like voice search and commands, Google navigation, and access to key services in the notifications pull down. Apps from the marketplace are still built for phones and just don't take full advantage of the screen real estate, they're just bigger. The Tab is also a step behind performance wise with a few laggy moments and its battery life is shorter by three hours. Now the iPad can't match up with the hardware features, but it's still the snappiest tablet on the market with significantly better battery life. The new control strip is a nice addition, but changing the orientation button to a mute button is idiotic. It also has plenty of apps built specifically to use the larger form factor, and it makes for a better user experience. But it's not enough, as the Tab finally takes its first round with a 4, and the iPad gets a 3.3. Next round is web browsing and multimedia. The Tab's web browser is a solid offering, but it's frustrating how it goes directly to most of the mobile versions of websites by default. Even with a 7-inch screen, the experience can be a little cramped. Now, flash playback can be hit or miss, and it has laggy moments when you're pinching and zooming into websites. Samsung's Media Hub is a nice way to get media content, but it still has a long ways to go. The 3 megapixel rear camera is mediocre, but one advantage is that it's easier to hold and use as an ebook reader. Now, the iPad's web browser is a full screen multi touch version of Safari that actually makes web browsing more fun and takes advantage of its space, even though it doesn't have flash. The multimedia experience is one of a kind with its deep library of content from iTunes. It has a polished media player, multimedia apps that add more access to content, and a large screen that enhances the experience. The iPad gets a 4.7 and the Tab gets a 4, so after averaging 4 rounds, Apple's lead has been trimmed down to 7 tenths of a point. The final round that decides it all is value. The Samsung Galaxy Tab can be purchased with a two-year contract on T-Mobile or Sprint for $399, or without a contract on all four carriers for around $599. Data plans vary, but at that price, you're almost paying the same price of an iPad 3G for half the screen size. Apple's iPad 3G starts at $629 with no contract, and Apple broke new ground with affordable data plans. The Wi-Fi only model gives you even lower pricing, but if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, it's the iPad. 
Tablet prices are still a little high overall, but in the final round, the iPad gets a four and Samsung's Galaxy Tab gets a three. So let's average out all five rounds and in a prize fight where Apple came out swinging with back-to-back -back perfect rounds, the Galaxy Tab closed the gap, but it was just too much to overcome and the Apple iPad 3G takes this first time tablet face off 4.4 to 3.7 and is your prize fight winner. Both of these tablets are great picks and will fit different needs, but this young market will constantly be flooded with new contenders and the war for prize fight supremacy rages on. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time on another prize fight. Hi, I'm Molly Wood, host of The Buzz Report, the show about the tech news that everybody's talking about. See it every Friday in high def at cnet.com slash buzzreport.